Hello everybody. Today we're going to go over how you read and reset the codes on your Kawasaki Ninja 1000 SX. Let's go ahead and get started. So the first way to read the codes on your motorcycle is through the, the interface itself. It can be pretty vague because it gives a Kawasaki general code number, which can mean actually multiple different codes in reality. So it's not very useful, but it can give you an idea of where to start. Now, what do I mean by that? I mean that it could show you code 11. So code 11 could actually mean uh, P0120 or P0121, 122, 220, 223 error code, which means different things. Throttle position sensor one malfunctioning with a wiring open or short to power supply, or it could mean a wiring short to ground. It covers multiple codes, but it gives you an idea of where to start. So we are going to cover that, but we're also going to cover the better way to read your codes, but it's also going to be the same way you clear them. So to read your codes with the Kawasaki number, you need to press your mode button up top to get it to the odometer. So first thing you do, turn on your motorcycle. Now, the, the service manual actually tells you to have it running. So go ahead, fire the motorcycle up, if it'll run. Uh, I do not have any codes right now, uh, so I don't know if it'll actually work just in the on position. Uh, like I said, normally I don't use this method, so I'm not super familiar with it, but uh, you could try it with just the key in the on position and seeing if it'll work, but chances are it won't because the service manual actually tells you to start the motorcycle. Anyway, so hit the top button to get to the odometer. Why the odometer? I don't know, but it says have it on the odometer. And then you want to push the top mode button and the reset button and hold them. When you do this, the code should appear where the odometer normally appears. And this is just going to be a simple numeric code, such as 11, 12. There can be letters, for example, B means it's an ABS system, uh, E it's uh, IMU. So you, 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 you'll have to look those up as well. I have a PDF linked below where I put together a chart for you that references all the codes and what they could potentially mean. We are going to go ahead and move to the rear of the bike, and we're gonna to have to take off the passenger seat and the rider seat. Okay, so my preferred way of dealing with the codes is reading them and clearing them with a code reader. Now, you don't need to go and drop several hundred dollars to get a fancy motorcycle code reader or a actual Kawasaki diagnostic tool. You just need an adapter cable. Now. This is a little tricky here, uh, so I'm going to try and make it as clear as possible. But I believe in 2020, they switched to the red Euro style cables. Okay, rather than the old method, old cables that Kawasaki used. So depending on what motorcycle year you have, will determine what adapter you need to get. So 2019 and prior, I'm pretty sure, have these connectors. They have two of these. Now, you do not want the rear one. You want the more forward one. So it's going to be up here. Uh, you'll know if you got the wrong one because you'll plug in your code reader and it won't read anything. So you want to get your front one. Now... It's going to look identical on 2019 and prior to this white cable, but on your 2020 and newer ones, it's got these red Euro style cables. And if you need to remove this plate, you can remove uh, the two bolts on each side that's 10 millimeter socket, if you can find it. But uh, it should be pretty easy to pull in to get in here. So just remove this uh, foam piece. And then you got to get this red cap off. 
So there's this tab back here. If you push it, the cap will come off. And then you have this red connection here. And then you can take your adapter cable, plug it in. And then pretty much any ODB2 reader will work, but not all of them will work. You need to make sure it supports CAN bus and uh, there's another protocol of it in the description below. I'll also have a link to a pretty cheap code reader. This is a Bluetooth code reader, but right now I'm just gonna hook up my normal. One, turn the key on. Go ahead and link. Okay. So you see we got connected. I don't have any DTCs. And you can actually go and even view live data. Here, I'll go ahead and start the bike up. Okay, but you can uh, go ahead and clear your codes from then, uh, from them. So let me go ahead and show you this other reader I have. I'm gonna go ahead and turn my bike off. Now, I will say, unlike when you plug it in an ODB on your car, it will not power up your reader. You must turn the key on before it'll power your reader. Um, you always have to have the key on to read the codes and everything, but in your car, you'll typically get power to the reader. Now this is just a, a it's, I think it was $14, I'll have a link to it. And this is if you don't have a reader already, but it's just a Bluetooth cheapo ODB2 scan tool. Go ahead and plug it in, and you just use a f app on your phone. I'm using an app called Car Scanner. I'm gonna go ahead and connect. So we can go to the dashboard. Let's just go ahead and start again. All right. You can go into the diagnostic trouble codes, read, and go automatic. And it'll tell, like, I have no DTCs here. So that's how you can use just normal ODB2 readers, code readers, and you can also clear your codes with them. You don't need to spend hundreds of dollars on anything fancy. When you're done, now some people actually wire these in permanently. Um, I don't. But just go ahead and put it back together and put it back in its little spot and just tuck it right back in there. Like I said, you do not want this one on these later model years. Actually, you don't want it on any model year. It will not work even on the older ones. You want the other one up front and it'll be clear, look identical, six pin connector. Now the adapter cable, it was uh, like $14 and the uh, cheap ODB2 Bluetooth reader was like $14. So $28 and you can do everything you need to do. If you clear your codes, you have to let your motorcycle idle for say 30 seconds or so uh, to get the idle position sensor or the throttle position sensor back in sync. If you clear the codes for some reason, it clears that out and it doesn't know uh, the throttle position or something of that sort. That's what it says in the service manual. I'm not sure. Just let it run for a little while to figure things out. Now, if you don't have a code reader and don't have a way to reset this stuff, what do you do? Well, you go through the manual process. The manual process is pretty simple. 
though lengthy. So you have to uh, start your motorcycle from off position. Start your motorcycle, let it run for 30 seconds, then take it out riding for 10 minutes. And at least five minutes of that, you need to be going at least 25 miles per hour. I believe that is 40 kilometers per hour. So uh, for at least five minutes, come back or stop wherever, turn the bike off. I mean, completely off. Turn the ignition off. Turn it back on. Start it. Wait 30 seconds as it idles. Proceed another 10 minutes. After, uh, with five minutes, at least 25 miles an hour. Repeat that again for a third time. And then the fourth time, the codes should be cleared, assuming you fixed the problem. I don't like this method, but, you know, in a pinch, it's what you have to do. But just in case it's not resetting while riding, or you're not riding long enough, or not getting up to speed, it can be problematic. So it is worth the investment to get yourself a code reader and the adapter cable. Now remember, you got to get the right adapter cable for your motorcycle. If you're not sure, go in your motorcycle and check. If you have a red port, it's going to be the Euro style connector, which I have a link below. And if it's the white port up front, it's going to be the other style, which again, I have a link to in the description. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask. Thank you for watching. Hopefully uh, your code issues are taken care of and you're out riding. Stay safe. Keep the rubber side down. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below. I will try and answer everyone's questions as soon as possible. If there's anything you'd like to see, any tips, tricks, techniques, anything at all motorcycle related, please let me know. I do these videos for you, so anything that you would like to see, I am more than happy to do it. If you like this video, please click that thumbs up button. And if you haven't already, please subscribe and click the bell to notify you whenever a new video drops. Thank you again. Ride safe and keep the rubber side down.